There's no need to get tense. Relax with Flux Condenser. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Hey guys, Fancy and I are just hanging out and we're anxiously awaiting the delivery of a mint pair of early 90s BMW 802 Matrix Series 3 loudspeakers. Uh, should be any time now. Oh. There they are. Finally, have the 802s unpacked, and they are absolutely beautiful. As the seller described them, cosmetically, they're in perfect condition. However, with this particular speaker, uh, when unpacking it, I did notice there was a rattling sound coming from the bottom. And uh, sure enough, upon listening, the mid-range of the speaker is not producing sound. So um, I called, uh, actually I emailed the seller, and uh, he called me back right away and we discussed uh, my thoughts that I think that perhaps something came loose with the crossover during shipping and that's uh, somehow disconnected the mid-range. So uh, he was very gracious and he said, go ahead, um, open up the crossover, find out what's going on and let me know. So uh, I've got permission from the uh, seller to um, open them up and make an attempt to fix this. And he assured me that he would cover any expenses and work with me as far as uh, my time and any other problems that we might have to address, um, whether the mid-range is shot or what have you. So um, he's been great about it. So let's do that now. Let's open them up and uh, take a look and uh, see what's going on. Okay, here we go. The speakers are a bit too big to get on my workbench, so we're going to work down here on the ground. And you can see that I've actually laid the uh, speaker down flat on its side. Because to access the crossover, it's actually on the bottom of the unit. So what you're looking here is the uh, these screws hold the crossover module in place. This is the bottom of the cabinet. And you can see there are screw holes here um, where one could attach feet um, or spikes perhaps if you wanted. Uh, so this is again the bottom. So let's um, get going here and uh, start removing these screws. Wood screws. There's two, three, and there are eight screws all together. Just gonna hold that in place. I've never opened an 802 before, but I, uh, I've seen photos and uh, I also have the service menu, so uh, somewhat of an idea what to expect, but not completely. Let's see. Use my fingernails. So I want to make sure it doesn't just drop to the ground. Oh, forgot a screw. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. What's going to be inside? Something's grabbing. That's not good. How am I supposed to access this if the wires are... Yeah, I can see the, the um, inductor coil. Uh, completely dislodged. I'm guessing... That has something to do with our <laughs> with our mid-range not working. Take a look, can you see that? All right, and it looks like those um, these two points. Not sure. Well, actually, first I thought it looked like these were um, kind of snap-in style for a PC board, but um, no, it looks like the well, not really sure how these connected. But you can see here on the bottom, the glue is broken loose. Um, Similar thing happened on the uh, Walsh 2s um, that I purchased from eBay when I received them. The, um, 
the one of the coils had become dislodged just like this. Um, however, that one actually um, remained, the connection remained intact and they were still able to play. All right, let me see if I can look around and figure out where these where this coil goes. And, oh, we got a couple problems here. Okay, I think I see what we can do. Um, there is a PC board on the other side of this and it looks like it clips on to this board. So I'm guessing I can. And it looks like there are a number of clips and quite a few of them have broken. <laughs> uh, that happens in shipping. All right, let me get a flathead screwdriver and see if I can pry away the clips that are holding the PC board to this outer board. And when I get this apart, I'll see what I mean. Be right back. This is why I would have preferred to have worked on the uh, workbench. All my tools are there. Um, right now I'm working in my, uh, my gym, which, you, which I've told you before is my vintage hi-fi room. And uh, so every time I need a, need a tool, I need to go and scramble and go to the other room. All right, let me see if I can pry apart very carefully. Looks like there are one, two, three, four, five, six or seven clips. And um, one, two, two of them are broken. And I have two more clips to undo before I can release this board. Okay. This is the, okay, two PC boards. Okay, and they attach to this lower board uh, with these clips. And uh, through shipping, or through the years, they're just about, well, only one, only three are, in, are intact still. Anyway, at least now we have access. Um, to these PC boards. Need to inspect everything and figure out where that coil goes. And I think it looks like it's going to go right about here on the other side. The question is, how do I access it? I don't understand why these leads are so short. Um, do they really make it so that you have to unsolder these to get access or go on the other side and um, disconnect it? Yeah, it looks like they have. Um, However, I can turn it this way. I'd rather not have to disconnect these wires, but it's not a big deal if we have to uh, desolder these and get it in. Um, to get this back in and do a, a good solder job, I think that's what we're going to have to do. Um, this coil looks as though it goes right about there. So hopefully we'll get that repaired and uh, we'll have our mid-range back. Um, I don't see any other issues, uh, just a bunch of these broken clips. Gosh, look at it all. Uh, these really did not fare well in shipping. It's unfortunate. Uh, once we fix this, we're going to have to figure out a good way to put all this back together. Even this um, strap holding this coil, one of the um, ties has come off. Well, one fun, one fun thing about opening this up, we get to see the date code on this uh, board here. Tested 802M, 14 of November, 1991. So before I desolder these connections, I was thinking uh, we're really gonna have to figure out a way to reattach um, this board to this bottom panel. And to do that, I really think we need, we're need we gonna need to get um, these wires loosened up inside the cabinet to give us a little bit more room to work with to actually be able to bring these boards down a little bit more. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to spin this around and I'm going to remove uh, this lower woofer module and see if we have access um, to those uh, the bundle of wires and maybe there's some clips that we can undo to allow us to have a little bit more breathing room with those cables. And um, this will be kind of fun too, give us a chance to, uh, to check out the woofer and see how it's constructed. Now to access the um, screw terminals on these woofers, uh, these sort of rubber 
bezels go over them and they sort of snap in place. Let's put that one to the side. The screws seem kind of loose. I just want to give these a little on the swiffer. They're a little bit loose. I'm just going to cinch that up a little bit. Two screws left. Carefully hold that in position while I remove this screw. Let's see, is that, does that want to come free? May need to pry that a bit. took was just the tiniest little push and was very careful not to damage the cabinet. Okay. There's one of our woofers. LF unit, low frequency unit, 8 ohms, Bowers and Wilkins loudspeaker, Worthing England, LF unit, ZZ8073. Okay. And for safety's sake, let me um, remove this and put this aside, so I'm gonna do these clips, but I wanna mark that first. Um, get a marker to mark uh, which one's yellow and which one's green, be right back. Now, there's a um, red dot here, a little bit of a bit of a magnet coming apart too. Um, red dot here, um, and I believe that's indicating that uh, this terminal, if you can see that, is the positive, which is yellow, and the green would be negative. Um, use my pliers to gently remove these terminals. Put a screwdriver there close to the cone, but I might need to. Just using the driver to release that. There we go. Our woofer. Let me set this aside so we're safe. Okay, now let's see if that indeed does this uh, give us some way to to, um, to to pull out the crossover a little bit further. So behind the woofer, there's a wire tie being used to restrain the cables. I uh, simply clipped that and was able to extend those leads quite a bit, giving me uh, much more room to work. Okay, so I decided I really do need to um, desolder these cables, uh, these wires from this board so I can work on it uh, and do the job the best way. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got my um, HACO uh, FR301 uh, desoldering tool and uh, what this will do, this will uh, melt the solder and vacuum it up so we can easily remove, hopefully, these wires. And you can see here that I've, I've marked where the cables go. There's a brown one here, blue, gray, and red. And I've also taken plenty of photographs so we can get this back together again. Uh, let's start with this gray one here. There's the gray, another red, let's clean up some of that solder, okay, the gray and the red, now the blue. Give a little pull on the water from behind. Alright, just 
just clean that up. Looks like we have a clog. All right, we're gonna have to clean that up before we proceed. So there are still, on this board, there is still a red and gray wire. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and, um, just so I can work on this on the bench and get this out, let's mark those as well and remove them. So we have a gray, this one I'm gonna mark with the, with the black as well, gray dot, and we'll call this one, um, a couple, we'll call this one gray black. We won't, shouldn't get those confused anyway, because these, these, this gray wire is coming from the side, which goes to the binding posts. And this is a red, and we'll call that red black too. Since we have another red, and I'll just put a couple of black marks on there. Yeah, this is clogged right now, so it's not going to vacuum. But let's just see if we can use it to sort of melt the wires for now, and just um, pull the wires out. Okay, there's our gray. Okay, and then I'll, I'll declog the um, this uh, the desoldering uh, iron when we want to go back and uh, clean up some of this mess. But for now, we've got it out. Okay, let me put this aside and turn it off. And let's take a look here at what we got. Okay, this um, this board here with the larger coils is for the um, for the base. And uh, this module here, this PC board, appears to be for the mid-range and the tweeter. So let's go take this on the bench and um, we'll work on this and uh, get, it up, get this all cleaned up and uh, get this reattached. Okay, I got the PC board on the bench. Let's take a closer look. The uh, coil is going to go right about there. Uh, I can't set it in place yet because um, I still have a bit of a wire still in there, a bit of the wire from the coil in there that we need to remove uh, to free that. Um, you can also see that on the coil there is a hole here and a hole here and there's a corresponding hole here and here on the board. Um, interestingly, this coil here had some rivets that were holding this in place. Uh, don't see any evidence, doesn't look as though this was riveted in place, but uh, yeah, I may take advantage of those holes and um, just uh, use them to secure this better in place so that uh, it's not just the um, just the solder uh, doing the job of holding this heavy coil in place, which is all that there was. So no surprise that it became disconnected. So once we get it back together, we'll take a look at it. Looks like they just opted to use some glue here to hold it in place. And um, that was probably fine when this speaker was first built. But uh, yeah, it didn't do the job during the last shipment for sure. All right, let's flip it over. And um, you can see the where we desoldered the other cables. A lot of flux left on this uh, this board that wasn't removed. I'm a proponent of removing the flux, flux from the board. Um, so I'll do that. We'll clean this up too and go from there. Um, I did get the desoldering iron uh, working again. All cleaned out. So why don't we do that to first remove, if you can see it, there's still a piece of a copper in that hole um, where the coil broke off. Let's remove that first. And that goes right about here. And I'm just going to push it okay, just a little bit. And here we can see the uh, piece that had broken off and that used to go here. Let's put that aside. Now, <clears throat> I want to quickly look and uh, make sure. You know what? Why don't I? This is the other. Um, the other hole here where the um, where the coil was soldered uh, from the other end of the coil and let me just uh, let's clean that up a little bit too. Before we start. It fits better than one way than the other. It doesn't really matter which direction it goes. The coil uh, is just a, a winding of uh, of cable. Whether or not you you know you start here or there, it doesn't matter. But on this board. It does sort of matter which way you do it because it fits better this way. So this is the original way that it was in, intact. Let me see if I can just get that in place to see, make sure we have enough coming through. Yeah, the wires um, coming out now don't quite line up the, with the holes, so they must have got twisted out of place a little bit. Let's see if I can uh, straighten them out. They actually need to get a little bit closer together than they were. 
Now I'm hoping we don't need to add any um, any extra wire to this copper and that we can, um, even though it broke off, hopefully there's still enough there that we can uh, solder onto the board. All right, let's try that again. And let's see, which way did that go? This way. So I'm gonna get that in then first. And there we go. Okay, yeah, good. And um, hopefully you can see that there there is plenty of, um, of copper sticking out of that board that we can uh, solder it. Uh, let's do that and then um, we'll uh, we'll figure out a way to use those holes to secure it better in place. Um, I suppose we could put a drop of epoxy the way they did it. All right, let's try a little bit of this amazing goop. Hold that in place. Now I'm getting some fumes from this, so um, off camera you can't see it, but I have a um, Heiko um, vacuum, fume vacuum, um, which I'm gonna turn on now. And uh, we'll use that while we're soldering and, and doing more desoldering as well. So um, to suck up the fumes from, this, from the solder and also from, the, um, from, this, uh, from this goop. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that on now, it'll be a little louder. And hold this down for 30 seconds or so, give it a chance to stick, and then we'll go ahead and solder it. Okay, let me uh, get the uh, soldering iron warmed up. Also, I'm just going to turn this too so that uh, these holes don't quite line up. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. You can see there's a hole here and a hole here. Just trying to align those. So if we do elect to put a screw in here or something else to hold that coil down, but the, we'll be able to get through. Okay, let me turn the soldering iron on. Okay, and to ensure that we have a very good bond here, uh, a little flux on this. Really make sure that solder, solder sticks well. And we have a nice clean bond. Get out our High quality Cardus audio solder. Okay, I was just pushing down on this board while I solder to um, it, to push the board and the coil as close together as possible and have the solder hold it there. Won't be as necessary on this side. That side is uh, just about where it needs to be even without me pushing it. Using plenty of solder, don't need to worry about overheating the coil. It's just a big bunch of heavy-duty, uh, thick uh, copper, so don't need to worry about overheating it. Um, just going to use as much um, solder on there as I can, sort of to have the best weld possible. And I think we can do a little bit better job. Let's see if we can get that to flow a little bit better. There we go, much better. Nice dome pyramid of uh, solder, very strong. I'm going to attempt to clean up some of this flux here, but um, I want to make sure that I don't remove too much of the um, the writing that I put on there. What I might do is why don't I get a thin sharpie and I'll um, I'll write the color code on the side as well. Okay, so we're going to have a blue here. Blue. Gray, red. We have a brown here. And 
And here we have our red, black, and gray, black. I'll just use K for black. Used to work in the um, graphic design industry and in uh, printing. K is often used for black. Um, for example, CMYK uh, for four color process, C for cyan, obviously M for magenta, Y for yellow, and then K for black. They do that so you don't mix up the, um, think if you used a B, you might confuse it with blue. So that's how we get K for black. And this one is the gray black. Okay. Okay. Let's. Um, our desoldering iron is still warmed up, so why don't we go over this a little bit, suck up some of that excess solder, so we can start uh, start with new solder as well. Turn the fan back on to suck up our fumes. Fume extractor off for a bit, and um, we'll turn. I'll turn it back on when we uh, when we do this. We use a little flux off here with the brush, and just try to clean up some of this excess flux. Um, flux, and we're going to go over the um, the areas that um, we didn't desolder or solder as well. Uh, as you can see, that um, B and W when this board was uh, constructed opted not to remove the flux, and we're going to do that now. So I'm actually going to, this stuff uh, is not the best to breathe, uh, as you can see in the warning. So I'm going to put on a mask right now. I'll go get that and I'll turn the, the, the fume extractor on as well. Be right back. Okay, I've got my mask on. I'm going to turn on the fume extractor and let's uh, start cleaning up this, uh, this flux. Yeah, I sort of feel like a dental hygienist when I do this, um, picking and getting the uh, the tartar and the plaque off these grooves. And um, uh, much like your your dentist uh, <laughs> or hygienist will tell you, uh, it's better not to let it get this bad. Now, if this was this uh, flux had been removed when it was soldered, it would have been a lot easier to remove. And you can see now, I'm having a little more of a difficult time. Uh, not too bad though. Uh, it, it's probably fine, but uh, it just looks better clean and, you know, leaving that flux on there um, supposedly does have sort of acidic properties that uh, can weaken the, uh, the solder over time. So it's a good idea to get it off. Um, that said, uh, I'm not about to go and open up the other speaker just to remove some flux on our board. I'll, I'll deal with that if I need to, if there are some problems develop. This one here, this coil became desoldered when we desoldered this. So I just want to make sure that I don't forget that so I can see it now. So I'm just going to tap a little, uh, tack a little solder there. Uh, 
Okay, it looks good. We've uh, successfully reattached our um, inductor coil to the board. And that should get our mid-range working again. Uh, I'm going to just see real quick if I can come up with a solution to rivet uh, this coil in place. Okay, I just want to show you what I did here to hold the, um, the inductor coil in place. Just a couple uh, two and a half millimeter uh, screws with uh, washers and lock, uh, lock washer and nut. Um, hold that in place. So now we not only have the, the glue and the solder, we also now have the, um, the um, screws and nuts holding the coil in place. So that sucker's going nowhere now. Um, B&W should have been done like that in the first place, don't you think? <laughs> Hindsight's 20, 20. Um, okay, and you can see here that the, um, you get the screws project a little bit on this side, but that's not gonna be a problem because this uh, part of the uh, board is recessed a little bit. Okay, since so many of these uh, clips broke off, the clips that hold the, um, the two boards to the, um, the bottom board broke. You can see they're all in pieces and they're very weak. I have enough to probably do the larger board, but I'm gonna try um, something different on the, um, on the smaller board, which has four posts, and, and again, they're all broken. So basically what I've done is I've taken, and you can see that I've done it here, is taken an M4 uh, bolt and an M4 nut and I have taken the head and pushed it down into this board and I've created a post. So I'm gonna do that for the, for the uh, four remaining ones. Uh, this one I didn't use any glue, but I'm gonna pop in a little, a little bit of glue in each one of these holes just to really hold that uh, bolt in place. Okay, so I'm gonna tap this one in place now. The head of these bolts just happens to be really the, the perfect size to fit into these holes. Uh, once you remove these, uh, these plastic clips, you're left with a larger hole. And uh, yeah, the head just fits in there really well, even without the glue. Just tapping it, in, tapping it in there really held it in place nicely. So that was sort of fortunate. Let me show you with this one. Yeah, you can see that fit in there real nice too. I'm just using an extra nut on these to keep it from uh, wavering and to give it a little bit of more, a little bit more to bite into that hole as opposed to just doing that. Again, what I'm doing is just threading a nut right about there or so, and then pounding it in. So we've got a nice, nice base there. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Put a little glue in there. can't hurt. Let's put this one in place. Yeah, and if this works out well, I'll see how the other board fits in. I may elect to get rid of these plastic ones for the larger board as well and go to this system. Okay, looking good. The fourth hole. A little glue. I'm using the uh, plastic end of the uh, hammer so as not to damage the threads on the bolt. You don't want to put metal on metal. When you go to uh, put your, your nut on, you're going to find it's not going to fit. So if you can, use a mallet with, uh, with a plastic head or put something in between your hammer and your bolt. All right, very good. So it looks pretty good. Let me go uh, check that out and see how that's going to work, and then we can decide if I'm going to do that uh, for these, the other board, the larger board, which is for the, um, you can see it's just falling apart on my hands, uh, the larger board, which is for the uh, tweeter and the uh, mid-range, uses uh, five clips. All right, let's go see how this works out. Okay, so I have elected to get rid of all the uh, junky uh, plastic standoffs and use the bolt method uh, which I showed you using the M4 bolts and um, I had showed you originally that I was going to use um, a, uh, a nut to create the space uh, the standoff that's required instead I just got out my uh, 
kit of uh, assorted washer kit. And I've configured it in this, this way because you know this cabinet's going to vibrate and I wanted to make sure that the um, nut didn't uh, work its way loose and start um, coming down from the vibrations and then creating all sorts of uh, uh, noise and rattle. So these uh, plastic uh, rubber washers should do the trick. And I'll just, just demonstrate with this. We're not going to put this in yet because we haven't soldered it, but uh, just to show you with the bottom one how it's going to work. Okay, it'll sit in once it's soldered. And see how nicely that works and just how solid that is. I've got a nice amount of separation there um, between the board and the, the foil. And then we'll just put some lock washers and uh, nuts on this and, and go from there. So yeah, I'm happy with that. That's going to be a real solid fix. Um, much better than it was. Okay, so I've started soldering this board back uh, together again. So far I've got the, um, the brown, the blue, the gray and the red leads and all that's remaining are the uh, gray and red leads over here which go to the binding post so let's finish that up this is the soldering we've done so far one here brown blue gray red and let's see next we're going to do let's do the gray one first that's on the bottom let's see if we can get that in there I wasn't able to get the fume extractor in, in here, but uh, I do have a fan blowing, so you can probably hear it um, just to blow the fumes away from my face a bit. Add a little bit of flux. Flux loves his flux, doesn't he? Yes, I do. Makes for much easier and much better soldering. Start with a relatively uh, clean soldering tip. Add a little solder. Heat the area up on one side and add the solder on the other side and let it flow. Go the other way. Let it flow back there. And you can move back and forth so you get a nice um, nice flow around. Okay, fan, blow those fumes away for me, will you? Clean the tip. These cables are relatively big and the uh, board, it's quite a bit of metal on the board, quite a bit of foil. so. Uh, it does take quite a bit to heat this up and to get the solder to flow. But yeah, don't skimp on the solder if you're doing this. Uh, you're not working on delicate components here. It's just, just wire, so just add as much heat as you need to to get the job done right. Okay, looks good. There's our gray. And our final one now, the red. Okay. That's set like that. A little bit of flux. Yeah, there's flux obviously in the solder already, but um, I like to add a little bit extra, particularly for, for something that's um, a larger weld that requires a lot of heat. You're going to have that, that uh, iron on there for a longer dwell, and it's just going to burn up any, so any flux that's in the solder because you're using so much heat and you're leaving it on there for so long. So adding a little extra uh, flux is really going to help quite a bit. But nice and shiny. Nice shine is a... Uh, Good sign of a good connection it means you're using good solder and it's fused really, really well. I'll clean this up a little bit. And again, much easier if you do it right away. Okay. And these I've already cleaned. Um, this board that we just repaired goes here. It's going to go in the upper part. The lower one is going to go down here like this, and this one will go like that. Let's get this lower board attached first. Let's see if we can orient that. All right, just trying to line that. Okay, that one will go like that. And then the top board will go here, but I really don't have enough um, play yet to put those on and lay this flat. So why don't we Secure this one, and then we'll uh, lift this on an angle and um, put the uh, well, put the nuts on that one. Let me get some nuts and washers. Okay, gonna use some four millimeter uh, lock washers. Just loosely until I can get all four of them in there.
Okay. This one in the back corner. All right. Cinch those up. And I'm hoping this works well. I don't see why it shouldn't. A uh, nice thing about using the washer is it gives a little uh, compression and spring to really keep that uh, nut in position. In addition, with the lock, uh, with the lock washer, should really keep that from moving around. Let me see if I can just get this driver in there. Uh, just enough to compress those washers a little bit. This other board's going to be a little trickier. All right, got it. Okay, you can see I have the uh, the board in position, and I've got to get uh, a nut here, 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 and in the back, and one more in the middle. And it's just going to squeeze that down like that. I'll do what I can here, but I probably will have to turn the camera off so I can, oops, so I can, <laughs> as you can see, the camera's in the way, so I can get in there and, um, and finish the job. Start with this one here. And let's get a nut going on that. Washer on this back post. Just hand tighten those for now. Lock washer here. And uh, let's see, there's another one behind here. Yeah, it's uh, getting to be a little hard for me to work. I'm going to turn the camera off and uh, finish this up, and uh, I'll show you everything completed before we actually put the bottom half together. Okay? Okay, got the both boards secured in place. Uh, double checking our work. All the cables appear to be connected correctly. There's our inductor that we fixed. Strap on this one back here, which had fallen off. Yeah, I think let's, um, let's put it back together again. Let's um, be very careful here. I've got this gasket uh, that fits into here that I'm really trying not to, to damage. Let's see if we can get that in there. Yeah, the cat's out of the bag with this uh, gasket once it got free. <laughs> Doesn't want to go back in. I guess what I could do, um, why don't I try this? Why don't we get our screws going? Okay, these are our Phillips head wood screws. And uh, just get them in position, a couple of them, and see if we can't use that to keep that gasket in line. Gasket's going to be important just to keep any rattles down and damp the vibrations. So far, so good. Camera might end later a little bit in my way, but I can work around it. A couple more to go. All right, now just the two bottom ones. Uh, that final bottom one there. Okay, looks like I have, let me just double check. Yeah, the gasket is in place around all the screws. So let's um, push that back in place and tighten it up. All right, let's double check again. Everything looks a-okay. Okay, I think uh, all those screws have found their, their places, and the gasket should be lined well and not bunched up. Let's just work our way around, seal it up, give it a push. And I don't want to over tighten these. 
these screws and this would, if you over tighten them, you could easily ruin the thread. So uh, just cinch them. And so they give a little bit of resistance, but uh, once you feel that resistance stop, don't keep going. You will ruin the, um, the thread. Not the thread in the, um, the screw, obviously. The thread in the, um, in the board. All right, now let's just see. Very solid. Sounds good. I don't think we're gonna have any problems with that. Now, let's spin the um, speaker around. Let's see, um, because we have a couple things to do. Uh, we wanna get that woofer back into position and also we wanna put that restraint back on the, um, those cables going up to the uh, mid-range and tweeter. Let's see if I can flip this around so you can see. Okay, so now we want to um, gather these cables together and we're going to replace this strap okay with another cable tie that was very helpful uh, to remove that to temporarily give us a little slack all right there it is so that cable goes around this brace here which is part of the um, the matrix bracing This is probably cinched this way too to reduce um, any rattling behind that woofer with those cables. Right. Looks good. Pull that tight. Okay. Cut the excess off the strap. All right, that leaves us now just to reinstall the woofer and uh, then we can test this out. Let me grab the woofer. All right, so these, uh, the green and yellow uh, cables are coming from the crossover from the bottom, coming this way, and they go to this woofer. So let's orient our woofer terminals. Our terminals will be pointing in the right direction. Okay, so the cable's coming this way and not overlapping. All right, and as you recall, I did mark the negative was green and the red was yellow, so let's go ahead and reattach that. Green. Yellow. Work very carefully around your woofer. Don't damage that cone. And make sure these terminals are in there nice and tight. Um, note that the, uh, the screws for the um, crossover um, bottom board is, were bigger than the ones used for the woofer. Very carefully. I'm going to line this up, and it looks like right about there. I just want to get one screw really cinched down so that woofer doesn't go flying out. Work slowly and carefully. Okay, we've got two in now. Now don't go all the way, just enough to hold it in place. Put the remaining screws in and work our way around. Make sure the woofer centers itself correctly. Don't want to force anything. Just let it find its natural seat. Work your way around. Okay, again, just cinch them up enough to feel a little bit of give and stop. Don't keep trying to tighten. You'll regret it. You can always listen later. Um, you can always, the next day, you can go back and tighten it up just to make sure they're cinched well. If you don't hear any rattles, then it's in tight, more, more than tight enough. All right, um, I think we're ready to try it out. Let's get this upright and uh, plugged in.